Detroit over the course of 50 years lost uh, 1.2 million people. And just between 2004 and 2014, it lost 244,000 people. It was just one blow after another. Uh, and I think for so long, Detroit was simply trying to manage its decline. Mm -hmm. they, it had hit rock bottom. The, the city has had a dramatic history of the, the heart of the auto industry, tremendous decline, and in 2013, in the summer, the city actually went bankrupt. Mm. But you told us that that was a great opportunity for Detroit. How can that be? It's now called the Great Bankruptcy of 2013, and it's not unlike the, the Great Fire of Chicago or Katrina in New Orleans. It, it was a moment, uh, a moment of pivot for a community that had to rebuild itself. 2012, there was a national headline saying, will the first, uh, will the last one out of Detroit please turn off the lights? And oops, too late. $18 billion of debt was uh, wiped away. So we elected a very capable um, CEO of the city, our mayor mm -hmm. Duggan. Yeah. But the, one of the amazing things about Duggan for me as an outsider mm -hmm. is that in a city which is 80% black, he is a white mayor That's right. and still seems to be accepted. He won um, saying uh, that every neighborhood had a future. Uh, that's what that was his campaign slogan. I know there's um, some resistance. Uh, there's been a lot of investment in downtown Parks public space new buildings. Uh, it's amazing at the same time. I think there's a lot of um, must, I don't know resentment in the neighborhoods outside the center that all the attention is focused in downtown and hey What about us our neighborhoods were in shambles? Uh, there were thousands of abandoned houses that kind of littered uh, otherwise uh, healthy neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So we had to like first rid uh, neighborhoods of blight. So that was the first end. But Maurice, tearing a house down costs a lot of money. If you don't clean up the neighborhoods first, you can't prepare it um, for investment. It's mm -hmm. the old kind of windshield um, test. When you drive through a neighborhood, does it look like a place that you want to invest in? Well, if you're looking at burnt out houses standing next to occupied houses, uh, it doesn't um, um, give you confidence that this is a place where you want to invest. So there was some basic cleaning up that needed to happen. And through the help of the Obama administration, Detroit was able for the first time to have a, a massive um, blight removal campaign. Detroit's known for its urban farming, but that doesn't really, that produces food, but not much money. I think you could take all of the urban farms in Detroit and uh, um, they probably would fit within uh, easily in, uh, within a square mile. Oh. And we've got 23 square miles of vacant land. There was a mindset change from thinking of land as this thing that's holding back the recovery to thinking of land as an, an asset. Yep. I saw this as probably our strongest um, competitive advantage um, because a city that controls its land uh, controls its future. One of the icons of Detroit's decline was the beautiful central station that right. stood empty for so many years. You have news about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, a really m miraculous uh, development in the history of this city. Uh, Ford, a motor company, which, you know, again, uh, was synonymous with Detroit, moved uh, to Dearborn uh, and pretty much uh, abandoned the city, um, decided that the future of their company is going to be tied to the renaissance of Detroit. And they came in and they purchased... Uh, the Michigan Central Station as the new headquarters for 5,000 Ford Motor Company jobs in the area of mobility. Congratulations yeah. on the return of Ford to Detroit and engineering that and yeah. getting the city back on its feet. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.